there, Megan Rosendahl here with the Aberdeen American News. With summer finally in full swing, people are looking to get outdoors to do some barbecuing, some grilling, and some bonfires. So we thought we'd take a look at some ways that you can create bonfires from stuff around the house. I hopped on Pinterest and I found four different ways that you can build fires using things that are right around your house. So we're going to make those and we're going to test them out. The first fire starter that I tried uses dryer lint, a toilet paper roll, and magazine print. Stuff the dryer lint inside the toilet paper roll and then wrap the entire roll in the magazine print. Because it was a windy day outside, this one really didn't catch very well. Uh, the magazine print simply wouldn't stay lit. As I'm sure you're aware, dryer lint is very flammable. So once I removed a layer of the magazine print, it actually did start. However, it didn't stay lit very well. As far as lighting fire goes, I'm not sure how well this one would work for the simple fact that it was really, really hard to light. The next remedy I tried was soaking corks in rubbing alcohol. Soak the corks overnight so that they have plenty of time to soak up all the rubbing alcohol inside them. I used three different corks. One of them was an actual cork, the second one was fabricated cork, and the third was fabricated cork with a black coating around the outside. The fabricated cork with the black coating I couldn't even get lit, uh, regardless of how long it sat in the alcohol. The regular cork did start on fire, but all it did was burn the exterior. It never caught. Honestly, the best of the three was the fabricated cork. Once this one caught fire, it did stay lit, and it burned almost the entirety. Um, the wind blew it out a little bit towards the end, but overall, of the three options, fabricated corks soaked in rubbing alcohol is the way to go. The third fire starter that we tried involves wood shavings, an empty egg carton, and some candle wax. Put the wood shavings inside the empty egg carton, pour a little bit of the candle wax on, and just break them up or cut them up into individual pieces when they're dried. Once this one caught fire, this one stayed lit. If I were to use this on a large fire, I would probably make six to a dozen of them and I would put more than one in the fire to ensure that it would stay going. The fourth and final fire starter that we tried was melted crayons. According to several sources on Pinterest, you can light an unused Crayola crayon and it will stay lit for 30 minutes. The instructions that I found online said to break up the crayons, put them inside a muffin tin, and bake them at 275 degrees for 10 to 12 minutes. Be sure to bake these with muffin liners. If you don't, the wax will melt to the side of the muffin tin and it just makes it really hard to get it out. After several tries of trying to get this lit in the wind, I did end up moving to a more secluded area. However, I still could not get the crayon to stay lit. I decided to try to put some of the wood shavings on top of the crayon and lighting those on fire, but even then, the crayon would not stay lit. If you can get your crayon to stay lit, it should work according to the sites on Pinterest. However, I wasn't able to. And there you have it, four different ways to start a fire using nothing but things found around the house. As you saw, some of them definitely worked better than others, but I think that all of them are ultimately worth a try. Remember, when you're around fire, please use caution and make sure that there is an adult present. Have a fun barbecue and camping season.